Hello and welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, a MuleSoft technical architect. Today we are going to see an interesting topic where uh, we can use uh, database polling to read the records using scheduler. Let's get started. So I already have a MuleSoft flow that has a simple HTTP listener that uh, contains database component to read the data from the database. So uh, I have a simple query that uh, fetches ID, name and the timestamp from this table where ID greater than the given flow variable. So that ID is uh, set with the user ID which is set as a variable here. So I have given one and uh, so it should fetch the data that's greater than ID 1. Let's, uh, let's see the content of the database table. So I have a table called players with two records, one with the IDs 1 and 2. So when we give ID greater than 1, it should ideally fetch uh, uh, record number 2 and the application is already started and I'm going to run this uh, uh, listener via SOAP UI tool and uh, when I run that I'm able to get the positive response and uh, we are going to see what the output is. So now uh, we are able to get the data with ID 2 as expected and uh, we are going to verify by hitting the service again to check out what the response is. I'm hitting again and as you can notice uh, um, the records are retrieved but uh, it's the same record that got fetched again because uh, uh, again the ID variable is uh, initialized with 1 and we fetch the record that is greater than 1 then it's going to result in the uh, same record that is 2. This is not an ideal use case in a real-time scenario. So let's take a use case for this. So uh, we are going to develop a mule flow to process the record that got inserted into the database. For example, uh, a system A inserts the data into the uh, database and you want to rate, you want to take the record, process it and then you are going to uh, insert it into the system of records uh, as a master record. So uh, whenever there is a new record that that's found in the database table and you need to retrieve it and then process it. So uh, let's see the components to be uh, designed here. So the database records have to be periodically uh, uh, retrieved because it has to be a near real time. So maybe you can imagine it has to be processed once in 5 minutes or once in 10 minutes. So in such case, uh, HTTP listener uh, will not be useful because uh, uh, HTTP listener is uh, reactive, but the scheduler is going to be proactive. So we need to remove this uh, HTTP listener and then introduce a scheduler here. So I have introduced, it's a very simple uh, design in Mule 4. So a uh, scheduler will be uh, triggered uh, uh, with a frequency of uh, say 5. So it will be triggered once in 5 seconds. So if it is millisecond, yeah, you need to give it as 5000. So it's going to be triggered once in 5 seconds. Let's uh, get the application restarted. Yes, it's restarted. Now you can uh, observe here, I don't need to go and uh, trigger the HTTP listener, but instead it's automatically invoking once in five seconds. You can see the logs uh, that's getting added once in every five seconds. But if you notice again, this is uh, uh, of less value because every time that uh, um, a scheduler is triggered, we are going to initialize the same value one and it's going to result in the same result. So you, you don't want to process the record that got already processed again and again. So how do we change this design? So the design should be in such a way that uh, you need to have a marker and somehow that marker should uh, fetch the data from the database table that never got processed before. How do we do this? Now let's introduce a, a component uh, called object 
that uh, store and uh, you can notice that there is a retrieve operation here let's see how to use this so retrieve retrieves the data from the object store which i have already configured here so mulesoft uses object store to permanently uh, store the data uh, because uh, if you use uh, flow variables if you restart the application it's going to introduce and initialize it with the same value However, even if the application is restarted, object store maintains the value by means of a, a permanent uh, persistence mechanism. So I already have the object store. So uh, I can directly use the retrieve operation from the op uh, object store. And I'm going to introduce the key here. So let's use uh, user ID. And uh, the object store is used to, going to use a key value mechanism where the key is user ID. And the value we need to maintain uh, and design such that it maintains the new value that's fetched from the database when we do the uh, operation in the consecutive time. So let's, in, I mean, there is a default value here. This is needed because first time when you fetch the user ID variable, it's going to be empty and it might uh, turn into null pointer exception. To avoid that, I'm going to initialize it as one. So this is going to retrieve the value from the user ID and it's going to go as a payload. So in the variable, uh, we need to um, set as a user ID, but here instead of one, we are going to use uh, payload. The final step is to uh, store the latest retrieved identifier into the same id so for that uh, we are going to use uh, object store um, store operation here so the store components stores the uh, value back into the key so we are going to design in such a way that uh, the latest id uh, read from the new records is going to be replacing this existing id here is what we need to do. So ID should be payload of zero dot uh, ID, which is the latest or uh, newest records. So now we are retrieving the value and we are using the value to read the uh, record from the database. And this must be the new record that is uh, stored back into the key. Let's save this and uh, Let's observe the behavior. So this is providing fail on null value to uh, false. This is suggesting this. So let's do that because um, whenever the, there are no new records inserted, uh, it's uh, it's failing because ID retrieves the null value. So let's go back to the configuration and let's go to the object store and uh, we will give here fail on null value false so this is preventing the uh, null pointer exception uh, happening because of the absence of new records so i i saved it and then let's see what happens now you can see the null value is retrieved which we can design in such a way that uh, if it is null don't process it and when it is not null process it so let's see how it works by inserting the new record uh, which is greater than the ID 10. So let me introduce uh, insert here. So let's insert uh, value 12 with uh, Coley. And I'm going to run this and let's observe this is retrieved. See here. So as soon as you insert that the new records, the new record is uh, uh, retrieved and then displayed here. Let's run it one more time and check how it works so this time we are going to insert a new uh, value 14 with the name dravit i'm going to run this this must be retrieved shortly yes here we go the new record is uh, retrieved so this way a scheduler can be designed uh, to retrieve uh, database records from the database table and then process it and ignore the previously processed records Thanks for watching this video and uh, I'll come back with another interesting topic soon. Please don't forget to provide your suggestions in the comment section below. 
and uh, see you soon. Bye.